Hello, I'm Neil Robertson doing transport two, homework number two. In this problem, we have a 10 centimeter long uniform capillary with pure H2 on the left side and pure deuterated water on the right side. For the first problem, we're going to be looking at overall mass flux corresponding to max molar diffusion flux. For this, we're going to look at the equation mass total flux equals mass concentration total times velocity. We're first going to look at finding mass concentration total. We know that the mass concentration total is the sum of the parts or the mass concentration of H2O plus the mass concentration of deuterium. Now to find one or both in this scenario, you're going to need to do mass concentration of I equals the mass of I divided by the total volume. Now we can insert density times volume for mass in this scenario since we were given density and not mass. So after inserting density and volume, we're going to look at how to deal with total volume. We have the total volume equals the sum of the parts as well, volume H2O plus volume of deuterated water. Now we know since H2O goes from 0 centimeters to 5 centimeters and deuterated water goes from 5 centimeters to 10 centimeters, that's split in half on the cap. So the volume of both pieces are going to be half of the total volume. Once we know this, we can use the equation, we can substitute that in for volume I into our mass concentration. For H2O, we use density 1,000 kilograms divided by meters cubed times one half V total divided by V total or 1,000 kilograms meters cubed times one half, which gives us 500 kilograms divided by meters cubed. For deuterated water, we're gonna use the given density of 1,110 kilograms per meters cubed, again, times by one half volume total divided by volume total to give us 555 kilograms per meters cubed. We're gonna plug this back into our original mass concentration and we're going to get 500 kilograms divided by meters cubed plus 555 kilograms per meters cubed to give us 1,055 kilograms per meters cubed for mass concentration total. Now that we have our mass concentration total, we're going to look at the other piece of information, velocity. To do this, we're going to have to look at the max molar diffusive flux. For the sum of molar diffusive flux, we know that it's zero since the amount going right from water has to cancel out with the amount going left from deuterated water. So that gives us that we're given that the molar diffusive flux at time equals 0 0.1 seconds, which is the max, is 2.78 moles per meter squared per second. So the equal and opposite of that is what the molar diffusive flux of deuterated water is, which is negative 2.78 moles per meter squared per second. So we're going to use the equation for molar diffusive flux of I equals the concentration of I times the velocity of I. We don't know concentration, so we're going to use the definition concentration of I equals the moles of I divided by the total volume. We don't know moles of I either, so we're going to use the definition of molecular weight to give us that the moles of I equals the mass of I divided by the molecular weight of I, which is all information that can be found. So we're going to plug both of those into our original equation to get the molar diffusive flux of I equals the mass of I divided by the molecular weight of I divided by the volume total, divided by times the velocity of I. We can simplify that down with mass concentration of I from our original equation over here, mass of I divided by volume total, to give us that the molar diffusive flux of I equals mass concentration of I divided by the molecular weight of I times velocity of I. Now, plugging in all the information we have, we're going to solve for velocity of I for each substance. 
For the molar diffusion flux of H2O or water, we're going to plug in 2.78 moles divided by meter squared per second. That equals our mass concentration, 500 kilograms per meter cubed, divided by our molecular weight, 0.018 kilograms per mole times velocity of H2O. Plug that all in, we get velocity of H2O water equals 1.008 times 10 to the negative fourth meters per second. For the molar diffusive flux of deuterated water, we get negative 2.78 moles per meter squared per second equals 555 kilograms divided by meters cubed, which is our mass concentration, divided by 0 0.020 kilograms divided by moles, which is our density, times velocity of deuterated water. Plug that all in, we get the velocity of that equals negative 1.0008 times 10 to the negative fourth meters per second. After solving for each of the individual velocities, we're gonna look at mass average velocity, which is by definition, the sum of the parts or the mass concentration times the velocity of each part all over the mass concentration total. So in our case, we're gonna have mass concentration of water times the velocity of water plus the mass concentration of deuterated water times the velocity of deuterated water all over the mass concentration total. We have solved for all this information. So we're gonna plug in from all our numbers from before to get 500 kilograms per meters cubed times 1.0008 times 10 to the negative fourth meters per second plus 555 kilograms per meters cubed times negative 1.0008 times 10 to the negative fourth meters per second, all over 1,055 kilograms per meters cubed to give us the mass average velocity equals negative 5.271 times 10 to the negative sixth meters per second. Now that we have all the information required to solve our original equation, we're gonna look at that again. We're gonna input our mass concentration total and our velocity to find our total mass flux. So our total mass flux equals 1,055 kilograms per meters cubed mass concentration total times negative 5.271 times 10 to the negative six meters per second, which is our mass average velocity to get a total mass flux equals negative 5.56 times 10 to the negative third kilograms per meter squared per second. And that's how we found the overall max total flux corresponding to the maximum um, molar diffusion flux. For problem number two, we're looking at the order of magnitude estimate for maximum driving force of diffusion at time equals 0 0.1 seconds. The driving force is equal to the derivative of x with respect to the derivative of z, which equals the sum of the mass of i times the molar diffusion flux of j minus the mass of, the mass of j times the molar diffusion flux of i divided by the concentration times the Stefan Maxwell diffusivity, ij. Now, we can input our numbers to get the mass of one times the molar diffusion flux of one minus the mass of one times the molar diffusion flux of one divided by the concentration of the Maxwell Stephen, Stephen Maxwell diffusivity one one, which will equal zero since the part on top equals zero and zero divided by anything is zero. And then we will add that to the mass of one times molar diffusive flux of two minus the mass of two times the molar diffusive flux of one divided by the concentration times the Stefan, Stefan Maxwell diffusivity one two. Now, from our problem before, we discussed how the sum is of molar diffusive flux is zero. So in this case, we need to determine that J1 plus J2 equals the same as J2 equals minus J1. 
And we know since this is a binary problem that x, the mass, the piece of the mass of one plus the mass of two equals one, or the mass of two equals one minus x one, which we'll use both to substitute in to get a new equation for the driving force, which is negative mass of one times the molar diffusive flux of one minus one minus x times the molar diffusive flux of one with mass of one. Divide that by the concentration times the Maxwell and Stefan, Stefan Maxwell diffusivity of one and two. You can simplify that by distributing it out here to get the negative mass of one times the molar diffusive flux of one minus the molar diffusive flux of one plus the mass of one times the molar diffusive flux of one. These two terms end up canceling out, so you just get negative molar diffusive flux of one on top, which we'll take over here. But for an ideal situation, which we have the molar diffusive, the maxwell stefan diffusivity of Ij is equal to the driving force coefficient or regular D in this case of Ij. So we'll substitute that in. So you get driving force equals negative molar diffusive flux of one divided by the concentration times the driving force coefficient of one, two. We're going to input our given number and other numbers into the equation. So we have the driving force equals negative 2.78 moles per meter squared per second, which is given, divided by 555,555 moles per liters, which is the concentration of water if you use 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, times 10 to the minus ninth, which is the standard diffusivity coefficient for liquids, which gives you negative 5.004 times 10 to the fourth. So your estimate for magnitude would be driving force is approximately 10 to the fourth. For the third problem, we're gonna be looking at sketches. Uh, so first, we have the mass concentration up here. We're gonna see that you have your initial where they're both the water's on your left and your deuterated water's on your right where the deuterated water is going to be a little bit higher because it has a higher mass, higher density than a water, which is at 1,000, while deuterated was at 1,110 uh, kilograms per meter cubed. And then at your 60 second mark, you're going to see that they're both um, mixing, that they're both trying to get to the other side, but still the major, con the major concentration is on the original side. And then finally, you're going to see them constant throughout the whole capillary, but there's more mass of the deuterated because it's got a higher density, higher mass throughout the cap. For the molar concentration below, you're going to see them both being on their separate sides, but this time they're going to have an equal number because the moles are equal on both sides at the original. After that, you're going to see them mixing just like with the mass. Uh, equally throughout the whole thing, but then I, yet again you have your original concentration size more concentrated at this point. But at the final, you're going to see them both equally concentrated, constant throughout the whole capillary. Over here, you have your molar diffusion flux, and you're going to see that at 0.1 seconds that it's going to immediately go to. 2.78 moles per meter squared per second for water and the negative that negative 2.78 moles per meter squared per second for deuterated water. But that's just happening right around the middle because the deuterated uh, makes this just start. For the 60 second mark, you're gonna see the same thing. However, now it's spread out. Uh, they're mixing more because 60 seconds has passed so you're seeing this diffusion across more than just right at five centimeters, but still centered towards the middle. And at the final, you're gonna see that the, the diffusion has finished. And so there is no diffusion and it says both are set at constant zero throughout the whole gap.
for the total mass flux, above that, you're going to see the initial phase go right at the center down to a negative 5.56 times 10 to the negative third, um, which we found. And after time passes, you're just gonna see the same thing, but again, like with the diffusion flux, of the molar diffusion flux, you're gonna see it expand out towards more of the capillary since there's gonna be more move, there's gonna be more um, mass movement throughout the whole thing. And at the end, you're gonna see that since everything is mixed out and everything is equaled out, that the total mass flux is going to be set to zero, just like with the molar diffusion flux.